How's it going? My name is Kobe. My name's Kavina. And my name's Katie. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab, where we're going to do really, really cool, fun science experiments that are breathtaking. And for this activity, we're going to do take a breath. So make sure that you download our lab manual at bit.ly slash Couch Potato Lab. Follow our social media at Eyes Youth. And follow, us, follow along with us, tweet your questions, ask a whole bunch of questions. So today's going to be really, really awesome. Um, we're going to find out the winner of um, on Tuesday's trivia kind of questions. So the question was, what did Tom think a banana was? Was it yellow? Was it blue? Was it orange? What color? I don't know. But someone answered correctly and did super, super well. So we're going to yeah. um, we're gonna show you who the winner is later on. All right. So to begin, let's talk about and learn our scientists. So to my yes. left, who do we have? Hello, everyone. Like I said, my name is Kavina. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me, um, today's kind of special because when I started at Eyes and I started doing these crazy science things, I started four years ago. And the first two people that I um, started this job with was uh, Kobe and Katie. So I get yeah. to be here with my very first employees. That's right. Throw back. Yeah. Yep. We made so many great memories together, and we're so excited to be as a team and uh, doing this activity with everyone here. And making more memories. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. All right, so my name is Kobe. My pronouns are he and him. And a really cool fun fact about me is that I'm actually really sensitive to the sun. And the thing is, Ouch. even though I'm sensitive to the sun, I'm allergic to sunscreen too. So <laughs> no, it's a lose-lose lose situation. <laughs> what do I do? Maybe I'll just wear an umbrella the entire time. <laughs> that means there's sun. no beach time for you. Nope, nope, gotta stay home. <laughs> <laughs> and who do we have to my right? Well, hello everybody. My name is Katie. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is that I cannot say the word that encompasses like, you know, like rings and bracelets and necklaces, like starts with a J. Jewelry? Yes. You say can't it. say jewelry? <laughs> Ju ju <laughs> jewelry? <laughs> it does not go well, guys. Katie is in her mid-twenties and still can't say jewelry. You know what? More that like that just means if you cannot say a word, then don't be ashamed because I can't either. Let's all say yeah. jewelry, f jewelry <laughs> five times five. Five, <laughs> five times fast. Ready? One, two, three. Jewelry, 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 jewelry. Nailed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 all right. So we are live to you on Treaty 4 land. So this is the traditional territory of the Nahiowak, Nakawe, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, and the traditional homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. So we're so happy to be um, sharing this land with these peoples and to recognize di the diversity amongst our audience. So you guys may be coming from different tr number treaties, uh, from treaties made by the Crown and Sovereign Indigenous Nations or unceded territories. So we're so grateful and so thankful to for with everyone to be able to recognize this and being with us here today. So that's awesome. Thanks oh so much. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping because today okay. This episode is the last episode of April. Yes, this oh. is our last episode um, of our pilot season. And oh. so what does this mean? This means that in May, we're going to come to you live Monday to Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with new activities. But what else does this mean, Kavina? Are you saying Monday to Friday? Monday we have a to new Friday. We, we have five episodes a week now? Uh-huh. This means we get to do more crazy cool science and we also get to meet a whole new bunch of scientists. You see this door over here? This <laughs> door. <laughs> we are going to be br bringing in a whole bunch of more eyes scientists to do crazy cool science with That's where I came from on Tuesday. That's where you came from. Yeah. And now look at me. Yes. Yeah, so stay you tuned know. on Monday because we're going to introduce one of our <laughs> new friends and they're going to be awesome and you're going to love them. So see you on Monday, everybody. All right. Um, so let's start, but the thing is, I looked at this lab manual and I was like, <laughs> oh. circulatory <laughs> system and a respiratory <laughs> system. Um, I don't know about that, and those are big words I don't understand. So yeah. I know that they have to mm -hmm. do something with like breathing, mm -hmm. and breathing, but the thing yeah. is like, like I've been sitting on my couch the entire time, 
And when I like go up the stairs, I breathe really, really fast, and my heart beats like extremely fast. Like Kavina and you, Katie, am I am I dying? Are you dying? Uh, am I, I dying? I don't think so. I yeah, think I your circulatory system and your respiratory system are working really well together. Kobe, you uh, do right? know yeah. what those mean, right? Like, do you know all the components of it and stuff? No, I no. think you're gonna have to take me through this cool journey uh, and try to figure out okay. and help me define what those two systems are. You know are. what? Kavina and I thought yeah. that you were gonna say that, and so we actually came prepared today. Yeah. Ooh, so right. um, let's just let's head down to the basement, okay, for a second, and then bring out our special guests. How about <gasps> that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Let's okay. sound. Okay. Ready? All right, and first special guest is. Ah, uh, hello everybody. I am the lungs, and I will take your breath away. Second special guest is. Hello, I am the heart, and I'm going to make your heart beat. <laughs> and third special guest is. Um, I'm a muscle. Oh. And uh, lungs and heart, I need your help. It doesn't <gasps> look like you're in a very good state right now. No, I, I can't move. Muscle, what do you I need? I need to move. I need oxygen. Wait, oxygen. Wait, okay. M muscle, I can help you out. I can okay. get oxygen. I can expand and grab oxygen. Okay. Perfect. Ready? Thank you. Is that uh, is that oxygen I, I see over there? I yes, I, I have oxygen. Okay, but I I don't know. I just I feel like I still can't get it over to you. I I'm scared it's gonna get like wrecked or something. You I think package it. Yeah, like an apparatus to like store it. Yes, I I know how to do that. Ooh. What is that? I have something called a red blood cell. And now these red blood cells I can use to transport the oxygen over to you, muscle. Thank you so much, lungs. <laughs> okay. okay. Right. Package it up. Can you send it all the way over here? Uh, I think it's too far. Heart. I can help. Pump it to me, please. Oxygen, I got it. Thank you, heart. Okay, so now, can you pump one more time and send it over here? Yes, pump, Please. pump, pump, pump. Perfect, okay. Oh. And I got the oxygen. <laughs> yeah! Party. I can move again, thank you so much. And now, oh. <laughs> oh, um, um, oh, are you stuck again? I'm stuck again. Okay, one more time. Wait, okay, ready? Lungs, Lungs I need your grab help. it. Okay, you got <laughs> the oxygen. You need a red blood cell again. I'm going to take a deep breath. <laughs> and I am going to keep breathing. And I am going to package it in this new red blood cell. Thank you. Ooh. Hold Hurry, on, muscle. Just a Pump little it bit. to me. <sighs> I want to dance again. I need to dance again. Pump. Pump. Bum, bum. Thank you. And I got the oxygen. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank Great you, work, special team. Special guests. Thank you so much. All Thanks. right. So now let's bring back our hosts and our scientists. Perfect. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Thanks. It's what great to that? be back. Yeah, I don't know. What like, happened? Yeah. What did happen there, Kavina? I Okay, were you watching from the basement? I was. I saw a that dance party. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a dance party. So I think what I can take away from that is the muscle. Muscles like to move, right? And in order for them to move, they need oxygen. And I think it was the lungs that can bring in that oxygen put it into a red blood cell, put it into our blood, and then the heart can pump that blood to the muscle to deliver the oxygen. Wow. Is that what oh you guys so got from it too? Sense. That yes. sounds fantastic, but you know what? I'm still a little unsure, and I just feel like, you know, I'm a very visual learner, and I almost feel like if I was able to kind of have something right in front of me and to, like, look at it, that Ooh. might be a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Yes. There's that, there, that word that starts with an M, and you can see it there. You can see with your own eyes. You a see model. A, a model? model. Yes, yes we need a model. So a lung mm -hmm. model or like a heart model to understand what the respiratory system and what the circulatory system is. So mm -hmm. garbage nearby. We need okay. both parts of that um, bottle, Katie, or just the top part? We're only going to need the top part of the bottle here. All right. All right. So what is Sweet. the next step? Okay. So we got our top part of the bottle. Kavina, what do we need to do next? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Um, all right. I'm no not worries, the expert I'm on this yeah, activity. Same. I think it involves a balloon, right? It does. It Kay. does involve Let a balloon. Let me try to guess. Okay. Do you cut the balloon on the neck? Uh, not quite. Okay. Uh, yes. Katie, why don't you take it from here? <laughs> here? You will need to do that, just not oh, quite okay. yet. Okay. okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to need to take one of our straws, and we're yep. going to take one of our balloons, okay? So what we're going to have to do is we are just going to put the balloon kind of into the straw like this, and then we're gonna tape it 
Do you so that oh. it holds like this. Do you put the straw all the way in the balloon? No, like we're not going to go all the way. We're just going to go maybe until it reaches like kind of the body of the balloon. So it's kind of just right in the neck here. In the neck. Okay. And we're going to tape that guy on. So what is that going to represent in our lung model? So this balloon is actually going to represent our lungs. Okay. So it's, I don't really want to ruin the surprise, but <laughs> you will see when we start to make our model, what exactly the lungs do, but you could definitely take a guess at what you think will happen when we uh, do this lung model. And if you want to text us or tweet us or yeah. Instagram us or message us on Facebook, we would love to hear what your hypotheses are Ooh, hypotheses. hypotheses so what a hypothesis like is is like a educated guess so if you have any hypotheses please text us text us your questions to 306-570-1013 or you can tweet us at hashtag couch potato lab lab you can um, tag us at eyes youth or you can do that with instagram as well so we are open to any questions about like building the model or anything about the respiratory or circulatory system we would love to answer because these two scientists are experts at the human body we so are don't be afraid to you know what we actually didn't tell you guys so uh kavina and i went to school to become experts in the respiratory and circulatory systems <laughs> actually where, what are those experts called do they have a name uh they do they have multiple names but if you've ever, you know, went to like a doctor or something, you may have seen some of these experts. And we'll talk a little bit more about those later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. do we have that straw taped to the balloon? I do, and securely. I have a tip for this nice. step. Um, when you're taping the balloon, so you're gonna tape it down and add s an extra few pieces up here too to make sure it's completely sealed. You wanna seal it so there's no air holes. Perfect, all right, and Katie, how are Got you it. doing? Good, I am just adding the last few pieces of tape. I also put an elastic band on mine just to kind of give it a little more security. Oh Again, yeah. you don't have to. The good thing about this is that you can kind of use whatever materials you have at your house, okay? So where, what would be some examples of other materials that we can use instead? Um, so along with tape and rubber bands, you could also use like an elastic, like if you have like a hair band, you could use yeah, scrunchie. Yeah. I'm really into scrunchies <laughs> lately. <laughs> Everybody loves those scrunchies. Uh, you could use, you could even, I don't know, Ooh, like maybe like, like instead like of a balloon, you could probably use um, a rubber glove down here. Yes. Just cut one of the fingers oh, off and use that. Smart. Very true. Yeah. Okay. So I think that we kind of have our models ready. Yeah. So no the next way. thing we have to do is we have to get it so that our balloon is inside our bottle like this, okay? But the thing is, we don't, we want to make sure we have our balloon kind of right in here. But if you want to see, the problem is we still have a lot of air right here because yeah. we don't have our, um, our like cap on or whatever. So what we need you guys to do is you can either take your cap and you can make a very tiny little hole in the cap, big enough so that the straw will fit in. Or you could also use Play-Doh or plasticine. And what we're gonna do is just make a hole just wide enough to fit the straw in, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's let's get a look on that. I'm gonna another use plasticine. Yeah. Another option that you can use probably like plastic wrap or aluminum foil. Ooh, yeah. yeah, so we just wanna mm. make sure that it's very, very secured and that air locked, right? So we don't want any air, air going locked. in through that um, the whole of the um, the bottle, right? Yeah, Just that's very true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're using plasticine to stabilize that. Yes. And to close it off. Kavina, are you using plasticine as well? I am using plasticine. Nice, perfect. Okay. Okay. So it's I see that there's only um like one balloon there. Is that all we need? Yes, that is okay. all we're using for this model, but. Somebody tell me, do we have one or two lungs? Ooh, can I answer that one? Yes. yes. We have a two lungs. Oh Very good. One on our side, one on our right side. Oh, I heard that like lung, the, the two lungs are like different sizes, the, right? Yeah, they are different sizes. Why? You know why, Kobe? Uh, maybe I breathe more on my left side <laughs> and breathe less on my right side. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 that's not <laughs> it. I know what it is. It's because... Uh, I am sleeping on my right side, and so then my left lung needs to expand more. Oh, okay. same. Yeah, mine does. I do that <laughs> too. Kobe and Katie, <laughs> I love that you have hypotheses right now. Like, you're generating educated guesses, right? But unfortunately, those are both um, not 
quite scientifically correct. You, your right lung is actually larger because it has more room. So on the left side of your chest, you have your heart, right? Oh. So your left lung is actually smaller to make room for your heart. So your so my le so my heart's not in the middle nope, of my body. No, it's slightly to the left. Ah, okay, well yeah. that makes more sense. Wow, it looks like your schooling really paid off. Yes, <laughs> biology school, highly recommend. All right, how you doing, Kavina? This looks like I was gonna say it looks like a lung. It doesn't quite look like a <laughs> lung, but I got it all put together. Well, yours looks like mine, so I think that's that's going pretty good. All right. Yeah. So what's awesome. the next step, Katie? All right. So now what we are going to do is we are going to take um, another balloon and we are going to have to cut the neck off of the balloon. And before you kind of start to do that, what we're eventually going to do is we are going to stretch that part of the balloon over the bottle so that we're able to kind of um, like take it and kind of spring it out okay so make sure you don't cut you know the whole balloon so you just have like a little bit left make sure you cut it enough so that kind of just the neck is off and that you're able to stretch it over the bottom okay okay, okay. all right so do i once i cut the balloon can viewers just throw out the other part that we're not using uh yes for this experiment yes, yes. Oh, okay unless okay. you have a different uh use for it because we are scientists and we are using different tools all the time save it for something oh. yeah yeah okay fun fact about katie is that <laughs> even though she developed this activity with balloons she's Deathly afraid of balloons. Uh, Funny, oh right? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> that is definitely true, guys. I am very scared of balloons. I do not like balloons at all. And so <laughs> I'm very happy that we are only using these balloons for these purposes and not blowing them up. Another fun fact <laughs> is that when I was in school, my friends gave me a surprise and they actually put about 20 balloons in my locker That's for cool. my birthday. Wow. That is cool. I would yes. have loved it. <laughs> Toby, did you do that? Um, no, no, I didn't know Katie back in high school, but we met in ice. In yeah, ice? In Four ice. years ago. Four years ago. Wow, that's so funny. All right, so how are those balloons coming along? I'll be honest, it's, um, it's tricky. It you is tricky. I'm using, I'm holding this bottle in between my legs and then I'm trying to uh, wrap the balloon around. If you have someone in your household that could help you out with this, that's probably better. Yeah, right, this Katie. part is very tricky as well. The bottle mm -hmm. is quite flimsy, hey? Yes, it is. Okay, maybe should we stabilize that, the, yeah. the bottle a little bit more? That's an idea. Know. Maybe some like toothpicks. Yeah, it's kind of like tape. Viewers at home, I think you might need a stronger bottle so it doesn't just collapse when mm -hmm. you try to wrap the balloon around it. Because you can see what happens here. When I wrap my balloon around, it just, oh, it all crunches. Ah. <laughs> if you guys want to let us know it. how your models are turning out, if they're turning out better than ours, then please let us know. Send us a message. Send us a picture of what yours are looking like. I yes. am going to try to um, you use a bigger bottle, a stronger there? bottle here. Ooh. So okay, sounds good. All right, and you remember that you can text us at 306-570-1013 or tweet us your questions at hashtag Couch Potato Lab with our handle at iesyouth for any questions, any suggestions, maybe a picture of your progress of your model. That would be super, super cool. So we can compare and see what you did and maybe adapt it to our models right there. So yeah. I have a question for you guys. All right, what's up, Katie? Okay, so you know how at the beginning you were saying that when, you know, Kobe, when you climb stairs that... Uh, you kind of get out of breath and stuff. Yeah. Do you guys know why that happens? Like why, you know, cause <laughs> I kind of have that <laughs> same feeling as well. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> you kind of have that same feeling? I do. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure I have to climb more stairs than Kobe to get that feeling, <laughs> but <laughs> I've Oof. heard that, so when your body starts moving, of course you're, like we were saying earlier, your muscles need oxygen, right? So your mm -hmm. heart starts pumping more and your lungs start bringing in more oxygen. So you start breathing heavier to bring in more oxygen. And your brain actually detects all of this stuff happening and they release special chemicals in your brain that get sent down to your body and then it tells your whole body to pump, um, for your heart to pump more, for your lungs to breathe in more, so that your brain is actually connected to your heart and your lungs and kind of tells you to do that. Oh my God, so oh. the brain is pretty much the most important part of ourselves then, hey? Yeah. Because it kind of controls everything so that we don't get sick or anything like that. All right. Um, 
Okay, so how's it going? Are, are we models? making any progress? We are. I yeah. am cutting my balloon further oh. to try to stretch it over this bottle. Yeah, now my bottle's too big. Too big? Yeah, we can't stretch it. Wow, okay. there's no winning with this model. <laughs> oh. This is a tricky model. This is a tricky model. I think if we had some stronger bottles, it would and all go well perfectly. Maybe a bit bigger balloons. I think these guys are a little... So yeah. since we're yeah. making a lung model, is the lung model, does it apply to like all animals then, Kamina? Some animals have lungs, yeah. but not all, not all animals have lungs. So what are some examples that, some of examples of animals that don't have lungs? That don't have lungs? Like, oh, where is it? Ooh, our friend, the tardigrade. Ooh. The tardigrade right. is actually a very small microscopic animal, and it does not have lungs. Oh, oh right, and I think another animal would be like fish, right? So the fish don't have lungs, but they have gills instead. So they yeah. actually, wait a minute. Oxygen is in the air, we breathe in oxygen. Fish don't fly up into the air to get some oxygen. So where do no. they get the oxygen from? Hmm. Fish can actually take oxygen from the water. Oh, so like... <laughs> Which, unfortunately, uh, we cannot do. So oxygen I is in water? There is oxygen oh, okay. dissolved in water. Yeah. Do you remember when we were talking about solutions and mixtures? Yes, last remember? episode. So yes. water actually has um, dissolved oxygen in there. And so actually water is a solution that has oxygen in it. Oh, mm, so I think back. then maybe probably the water like goes through the gills and then kind of like contacts, makes contact with their blood or the circulatory system, yeah. so that the oxygen would dissolve from the water into their bloodstream. So maybe that's how that works. Yeah. Counter current exchange. I think Counter I remember. Counter current exchange. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Kavina, how are you doing? I'm <laughs> quite struggling. Same. Um, <laughs> if we want, we could move on. Mm. We could do our heart model. Oh, we, could, we could still talk about the lungs for a little bit. Yeah. And um, move on to our heart model. This is OK. Science isn't supposed to go perfectly, right? Well, and you know what? This is still a great model of the <laughs> lungs. So yeah. essentially, I want you guys to tell us what happened. If you were able to stretch that balloon over the bottom and you were able to kind of get that moving, I want you to take that balloon and just like kind of snap it back, not super, um, you know, like hard or anything, but I want you to take that balloon and just kind of stretch it and watch what happens to the lungs, okay? And I want you to um, text us or tweet us or uh, message us or whatever, and I want to see what you guys did. But this is still a wonderful model of the lungs, say. <laughs> so we have <laughs> our, um, where we are able to take in oxygen and we have our lung here and we can see exactly what that looks like. And actually, if we were to put Kavina and eyes together, we have two lungs. We have two lungs, yeah. Ah. So the, the, the elastic that goes on the bottom here is supposed to represent the diaphragm. Oh, big word. Yeah, what does that mean? It's a big word, diaphragm. And it's this muscle that sits across your body here, under your lungs, and it can contract and it can relax. And when it contracts, it's almost like as if you were to take that elastic and pull it. And when you pull it, it allows more, there's more volume in your body cavity. There's more volume in this bottle. And the, um, the lung, or the balloon in this case, is, willing, is able to expand. That's how oxygen is brought into your lung. Wow. So if, you're, if your diaphragm contracts, so if you pull on your balloon, the lung will expand with oxygen. Ooh, that reminds me of like right a physics concept called physics. Boyle's Law, right? Hey, yeah. I love physics. All right, so I think what Boyle's Law is deals with like volume and pressure. Mm -hmm. So if volume increases, then there's lower pressure. If there's higher pressure, then there's lower volume. So I think how that plays along with the diaphragm is that once we breathe in, does our diaphragm increase or decrease with the volume? When we breathe in, your diaphragm is actually contracting and it's um, making our body cavity uh, larger. So there's more volume. Oh, so that less means pressure. So less pressure. So air can just kind of like flow into our lungs. And then when we breathe out, <laughs> less volume. Less volume. So your <sighs> diaphragm goes up and it forces um, air out of your lungs. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying <laughs> that I have said diaphragm? wrong my yeah. entire life <laughs> <laughs> yes Katie. it's not diaphragm no the not g diaphragm. is silent <laughs> there is a g in that word and it's silent 
Interesting. All right. So, um, so that is the lungs. So it kind of like thank you for the models. The, even though the models didn't work perfectly, please mm -hmm. send in your um, pictures of your lung models, yeah. and we can compare it later on. And stick around. Maybe we'll get some working for the next episode next Monday, mm -hmm. um, and we'll have a working model for you. Yes. All right. So. I already mentioned that I've been like sitting around and doing not much, so I decided <laughs> to maybe entertain myself and go I got some scans of my lungs. What? Yes, I know. You scanned your lungs. I Katie scanned my lungs. I just got a printer that. and. Zroop. Well, I think that you've been too bored. No. <laughs> <laughs> and these scans are like so beautiful. They're perfect. So I decided to frame them. Let me show you. Oh, what is happening right now? <laughs> All I right, I really decided to oh. frame my lungs. Wow. And the thing is, like, I have no idea what this means. Like, I don't understand why is there's, like, a whole bunch of grapes in my lungs. Like, grapes. do I get to harvest that and eat it myself later oh, on? Or <laughs> like, don't eat your lungs. That <laughs> is gross. <laughs> um, no. Katie, do you think we could help Kobe out here? I think we could. I think that we need to pass on our knowledge to Kobe. <laughs> yes. All right, so educate me, please. First, I'm confused about this part right here. So there's like a long, long, like kind of like a pipe, I guess. Is this it's the like esophagus that you were talking about last episode? Because <laughs> fun fact about Katie, um, she has a narrow esophagus. What does that mean? Does that mean that she can't breathe? Oh, I don't wow. know. Oh, Katie, you please know educate what? me. I have explained this to you many, many <laughs> times before, Kobe. So it's okay. I'll go over it again. So. Yes, I did have a narrow esophagus, but it did not mean that I could not breathe, okay? So our <laughs> esophagus is the tube that leads down to our stomach so that we are able to eat. Thankfully, I was able to breathe because that is not the same tube uh, that we use to breathe in, okay? So when you think about it, are you able to talk and swallow at the same time? No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. yeah. No. No. <laughs> exactly. Right. Because that would be kind of dangerous, and we could. That's kind of where we can choke and whatever, and get some kind of saliva, nice juicy saliva in our <laughs> lungs. Oh, so yeah. we are not <laughs> wanting to do that. Okay. So I'll, I'm just going to come and kind of point to Kobe's lungs here. Look at those lungs. Those are Ooh, beautiful. So Kobe. beautiful. I know, right? It's Kay. perfect. So this tube right here is actually called um, our trachea is a little bit higher and then this comes down and then into the bronchi okay so uh, all of these tubes bronchi. it goes trachea bronchi and then bronchioles all right let me let me repeat what you Kay. said esophagus uh, Kobe? Pipes, Kobe, Kobe, bronchioles. Kobe. <laughs> you know what I'm not sure why you're getting scans of your lungs when you really should be getting scans of your hearing <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, listen Kobe listen okay so we got our trachea we have our bronchi and we have our bronchioles okay mm. and so this is just kind of the the track that our air goes through because we don't really get oxygen directly into our lungs or else our lungs would be outside of our body and we would look kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. But uh, you know what? I do think you had a good uh, good question about these little grape-like things. Ooh, I, yeah. I'm kind of blanking. Kavina, can you help us out? Yes. So these grape-like things have a pretty cool name. It kind of sounds like a pasta. Alveoli. Alveoli. Kind of sounds like ravioli. Ravioli. <laughs> That's how you can remember it. Um, but no, they're not edible, Kobe. Don't eat your lungs. Okay. These are alveoli, and they're like tiny, tiny little balloons. There's literally, do you know, there's 30 million. No, no, 30 no. Million? Correction. There's 300 million alveoli in what? your lungs. What? You're kidding. 300 oh my. million. That's a lot. Yeah. That's Th a lot. So these are tiny, tiny little balloons, and that is where the oxygen goes into your lungs. So your, your lung isn't just one big sack. It's a bunch uh -huh. of tiny little um, alveoli that fill with air. Oh. So yeah, the air comes down, fills your alveoli, and those alveoli are so small, and they have such thin walls that the oxygen can actually go through that wall. Wow. Yeah. And so when the oxygen goes through that wall, it goes into blood vessels, and then the heart takes it from there. So it is it blood. kind of like, for any Harry Potter fans out there, is it kind of like when they go through that train station wall? Do you remember? <laughs> they have, yes. like, a car, and then they just, like, Platform go head first. Platform nine three quarters. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. So that's how that works. The oxygen can go through the alveoli. Mm, I have a really, really good question from one of our viewers. What is happening when I have the hiccups? 
Does anyone know? Mm, I believe it has something to do with the diaphragm. Diaphragm? The diaphragm. <laughs> the diaphragm. <laughs> All right, Katie, so what happens? Do you know by chance? Um, you know what? You guys might need to correct me if I'm a little wrong here, but I think it has something to do with your diaphragm um, kind of like contracting and like kind of like almost twitching. Is that like the right word to say? Yeah. yeah. And so then it's you're not when you're not getting proper oxygen, then your diaphragm is kind of just like kind of a bit out of control. And so your body just responds by hiccuping. Yeah, uh, I think it's your brain trying to help you out. So yeah. Does it mean that I should probably like drink some water to alleviate that hiccup and that twitchingness of my you diaphragm? Know what else works, Kobe? What works, Kavina? Ah! Ah! Scaring. Scaring. Being scared. Really. Well, really. Mm. Okay. You know what else <laughs> helps? Holding your breath. <gasps> and then, I mean, not forever. But okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I won't do that. I, you hold your breath for a few seconds, and then you slowly release, and it's able to kind of reset that breathing back. So very good question. Yeah. All right, I have a really, really good question right here um, as well. Um, why can't muscles move without oxygen? And this is from the Hayes Brothers. Thank you for tuning in again. Mm. Hello. Kavina, why? Why can't muscles move without oxygen? That's a really good question, and if you want to learn the whole reason why you could take a degree in biology at the <laughs> university. That's what biology is all about. Um, but long story short, your muscles need some kind of energy. And the energy that they use is called ATP. <laughs> it's an acronym, <laughs> ATP. And to generate that energy, they need oxygen to help um, the cells out. So to make ATP, which is the energy, they need oxygen as almost like an ingredient. Oh, yeah, so that's so why I always energy, need to no breathe <gasps> when I like do my bicep curls. <laughs> yeah, you gotta breathe. You gotta breathe nice. when you do a curl. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Um. So please text in and tweet in your questions. We yeah. love to answer them because I have a really, really good question. I'm um, directed to Katie, and Ooh. I love this. Katie's I'm so seat. happy that you sent in this question. So Katie, yes. Why is Katie afraid of balloons? Um. <laughs> did you have a traumatic experience? Are mm. there animals? That that have different number of lungs. Okay, let's talk about Katie. Yes. Did you have a traumatic experience? Okay, <laughs> viewer, thank you for <laughs> sending that in. That's a great question. Um, you know what? I, I don't actually remember any sort of experience that kind of facilitated my fear of balloons, which, fun fact, is called globophobia. If you're a cool kid like me <laughs> and you're afraid of balloons, you have globophobia, maybe. Don't take that. <laughs> Definitely. But, uh, yeah, I don't really remember any sort of thing that set it off but I just remember like I don't like the anticipation of it like I don't like you know having a balloon right here and just like the waiting the waiting for it to pop because I loud noises kind of scare me and stuff so that was a good question viewer thank you for asking so that. does that mean that you're scared when I like scare you from behind are you like traumatized because it reminds you of balloons yes <laughs> actually Kobe uh likes to scare me from behind he actually specializes that in that <laughs> almost every day <laughs> It's because you always have the hiccups, so I'm trying to save you. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I'm trying to save yes, you. Yes, thank you, Kobe. All right, so awesome. I think I have a better understanding of the lungs now, and I'm going to put away my scans, even though they are super, super beautiful, I th because I'm kind of confused about the circulatory system now, and I think I need to learn more about the heart. The heart Yes, now. so like, can someone tell me why, what is the heart? Why do we need it? Like, well, mm. okay. is it because I need to, I need a heart to love people? Is that why? Oh, I mean, Maybe. yeah. <laughs> yeah? I think you have a big heart already, Kobe. Oh, thanks, Kobe. Um, you too. Why, Katie, what do you think about doing another model to help Kobe out? I think that's a great idea, yeah. Kavina. Yeah, I think that we would be able to do that. And I think it's really important to kind of understand, yeah. like, you know, why we need a heart but also how it works because i still even get a little bit confused about you know how exactly a heart works and how it's able to actually pump that blood yeah. that contains that oxygen all around our body and it's all a muscle right. so yes. for this um heart model what materials do we need katie um i see that you have a jar with 
vampire blood in it. I'm very <laughs> scared already. So you know what? Uh, this is actually cultivated from my backyard. Uh, just kidding. No, it's just it's <laughs> water and food coloring. Okay, you could use whatever type of food coloring. If you don't have food coloring, don't sweat it. No big deal. Uh, Kavina used blue food coloring. I use blue. Do you want to know why I use blue food coloring? Is That'd it be because great. Because we have blue blood. We don't have blue blood. Oh, Kobe, that okay. is a myth. <laughs> Some people think like if you see your veins here that they're a little blue. Um, the blood inside is not actually blue. But you know who does have blue blood? Lobsters. Lobsters? Yeah. What? Ooh. They have something called cyanin in their blood, which makes it blue. Oh, oh, a really, really also really cool fun fact is that um, in my research project, I get to I got to play with like wax worms. And inside the wax worms, they don't have red nor blue blood, but they have something called hemolymph, and that's like yellow. So they kind of have like yellow blood. Yeah, what? there's different colors. Wait, are you guys telling me that not everybody has red blood like we do? Nope. No. Crazy. Because thing. we have iron in our blood. Oh. oh. So that makes it red? Yep. Yeah, okay. Perfect. All right, Katie, what else do we need? All for right, this? so yes, we need a jar full of a water or anything. It could be colored, it could be uh, just plain water. Jar filled with it about halfway ish. Uh, you can take the yeah. lid off, you're not going to need this guy. Uh, and then you are going to need a balloon. And I actually have one already with the neck cut off, but if not, if you still have the neck, then just give it a little snip there and cut it off so that you have both the, uh, the kind of head of the balloon and the neck as well. Okay. And then you're going to need two straws as well. Bam, bam. Kay. Cool. Bam. Got, Got it all. Perfect. All right, okay. so what is the first step? So first thing is we are going to take that balloon after we remove the uh, lid of the jar. We are going to take this balloon and we are going to stretch it over the jar. All I right. think this will be more successful than last this time. This one <laughs> is guaranteed to work. I know it. Ooh, Kavina's got I it. Got Nicely it done. on. Perfect. Perfect. Blue blood is contained. It's looking good. So we want to try to get it so that it's pretty much stretched all the way across. So you like can either yeah, like a trampoline, <laughs> exactly. Oh, like nice job, Kavina. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I Kavina, what is the next thing that we have to do once we have our balloon over top of our jar? Okay, so now that we have the base of our heart, we need to have chambers coming out of that heart. Okay, so we need to ha somehow get these straws into our heart. Just You need something semi-sharp, like a toothpick, a skewer. Um, pencil. Maybe some a pencil is a good one. Mm -hmm. And you're going to add just a tiny little pole about in about how uh like not quite on the edge but kind of not quite in the middle in between the middle and the edge poke a little hole boom just like that and then you're going to s um put your straw through that hole hey there Ooh, we go nicely done okay cool we got one in and you're just going to do that to the other side as well all right yep. So you talked about chambers. So do we have chambers in our hearts? Yes. How many? We have four chambers. Four chambers. Oh, mm -hmm. four chambers. All right. So, ooh, Katie actually took a class on the heart. Hey, Katie. I so did. Katie should know all the names of all ah. p all the names of the four chambers. Correct? Yes. All right. <laughs> Can you tell me what all four chambers are? Because I have no idea. Yes. Okay. So there is the left and right ventricles. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, yep, and then <laughs> there is the left and right fill in the blank. Atria. Atria. Oh, very good. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Yep. Ooh. So all right. Bam. That's this is a this is the good this is the step you should be at right now. Okay. Oh. So we have our heart, and then these are the would you you would call them the the vessels, right? Yeah. The vessels. Okay. Ooh, Kavina, we are rocking this. We one. are. Okay. Nicely so done. the next step is to close one of these um, vessels off. You can do that with the neck of your balloon. Okay. Y what you're going to do is just put it on and then just fold it over so you can seal the end of the straw. And then just going to tape around that to seal it off. Okay. All right, so remember, if you have any questions about how to build this model or any questions about um, blood, heart, um, lungs, please tweet in or text in your questions. Text us at 306-570-1013 or tweet us with hashtag CouchPotatoLab. We love it, and I think I have a really, really good question um, from 
one of our viewers, why do we have iron in our blood? What is the importance of iron? And hmm. I think we kind of explained it in our live demo with our favorite characters, Lungs, Heart, and Muscle. Yeah. So let's have Kmina, <laughs> why do we need iron in our blood? Iron is, is, a, is an element, and it's a metal, and it likes to stick to oxygen. So iron is in our blood to help those red blood cells grab onto that oxygen molecule, and it won't let go until it gets to the muscle. So oh iron likes okay. to stick to oxygen. Perfect. Oh. All right. So Katie, how's that heart model coming along? You know what? My heart model is actually looking pretty good. I'll hold mm. it up here. So this is what we have going. So we have our uh, our vessels up here. We have our main heart here. And then we also, I have my end taped here so that uh, this is a very important step. Uh, in order to kind of look at exactly how the heart is working. So mine is looking pretty good, and I think I'm ready to test it out if you are, Kavina. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Ooh, all right. So when we, we are going to press on this little trampoline portion of the heart, and th that will symbolize, oh, that will represent um, the heart beating. So when it beats, Ooh. you'll see what happens. Okay, ready? ready? One. Boom. Boom. Oh, oh. <laughs> yep, go. go. Ooh. Ooh. It's that? coming out. It's the blood pumping. The heart is pumping all the blood. Do you guys know what like what makes the heart pump? It's a muscle. Oh, all right. So a heart is a muscle. Yeah. yeah. The heart is contracting, just like if you like flex your bicep. Uh, um, the the oh. heart is basically. <laughs> your heart <laughs> is spilling <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> Kavina. <laughs> it is. Uh, so it's flexing, and then it's um, pushing the blood out the other side of the heart. Ah, so right. there, there is actually two openings to the heart. There's. And so when one side of the heart is closed, it forces the blood out the other side. Oh. So you can see, too, here my model using red blood looks the same as Kavina. So whenever we are pressing down, our heart is beating, and it's uh, squirting that blood all over our body. I got a fun fact about squirting blood. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did you know the heart is so strong that when it pumps, it can actually squirt blood 30 feet across the room. You're kidding. Yeah. That's oh my God. Like that's so far. Wait, yeah. did you try that? <laughs> <laughs> I did not try that. I'd be in the Just hospital. take out your heart. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that strong. Cool. Yeah. All right. So thank you, everybody. That is awesome. Your heart models look fantastic. Thanks, so Katie. that's great. I could so do this remember, all day. So remember to yeah, tweet in and text in your pictures of your heart models because we would love to see them. Um, if you tag us in your story for Instagram, we can um, re-tag you or retweet you and post it on our story and share it with the world. So please do that. It's really we love to see all your designs and it's great participating. All right, so thank you guys so much. Thanks. So I'll just keep pumping blood oh over here. Oh, <laughs> Kavina is just going. All right, so and it is uh, time. Oh, <laughs> it is time to reveal <gasps> our contest winners. No. Oh. So go, on Tuesday, we asked the question, what color did Tom think a banana was? And the correct answer is, three, two, one, orange. orange. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, well, he said it orange, but he knows it's yellow. Yes, he's just making a funny mistake. <laughs> love you, Tom. Please come back. I love you so much. <laughs> All right, um, so our, the winner of our contest is drum roll the, the Hayes, Hayes brothers, brothers. yeah you were the first one to text us your um, answer and it was correct so very very good you're we're going to send you a cool Sweet. prize package so make sure that you are texting in and we'll have someone reach out to you and figure out um, how to deliver your prize good job right, guys so thank you so much and continue on with our live stream because we will be having these cool giveaways from graffiti, graffiti tv and from eyes as well so keep tuning in thank you so much <sighs> yep. all right guys well this was really fun but you know i'm kind of feeling like a little a little bit sleepy like i kind of feel like i just need like a good stretch or something you know good like i'm stretch yeah like a good kind of like I'll join you, you ever one? feel <laughs> like just kind of like dancing or just kind of like letting out some energy yeah. or I feel just stuck behind this this table. <gasps> if I <a> move, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, welcome to Kobe's Booty Burning Bumpin' Boot Camp. Are you guys ready? Uh, what's happening? Yes, we're going to exercise. So get your butts off your couch and standing up because we're going to do some cool activities. Kavina, I need to what you wish for, Katie. Yeah, I Are you so. ready? Yes. Stand right there. Kay. Kavina, stand right there. The first action and first exercise we're going to do 
is jumping jacks. Okay. Ten I jumping to do jacks. Those. Go. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Very, very good. <sighs> Next, I want you to do five squats. Ready. Oh. S ready. Set. Go. Bam. Two, three, four. Five nicely done. All right, so I'm going to give no, you a no. really, really, really hard exercise now. Are you ready? Yeah. Do five burpees. Oh, my God. One. One. Oh. Two. Yes, keep two. going. They're so hard. Oh, my gosh. Three. My muscles are burning. Wait, why are you doing Four. that? I am. Five. Nice. Last <sighs> one. I want you to do a really, this one's the hardest one. A pistol Squat. A pistol squat? Pistol yeah, squat. Yeah. Kavina, show them Good how thing it's done. I wore jean shorts today. <laughs> okay. Oh. Ooh, that's hard. That's a single legged squat. Ah, Can you ooh. do that? All right, Katie, give uh, it a shot. Okay, yep, that's, that's all good. <laughs> no problems ooh. over here. My heart rate's getting Whoop. super elevated here. My heart. How's your heart? You know what? The first exercise made it beat really, really fast. All right. Yeah. So there's actually pulse points in our bodies, so we can pulse? check our heart rate because, like, our heart is beating all the time, right? Yeah. So in order to check if you're like alive or what your heart rate is, there are two pulse points that are really, really easy to read. Huh. The first one is right around below your neck, actually, on your neck, below your um, jawline. Oh, oh. right yeah. here. Oh, okay. I feel it. Yes. Yeah, Wait. So I, what's the other one? So the other one is the wrist right here hmm. and you oh. can check it right there yeah you can feel it beating do you feel like that pressure it's like throbbing yeah mine's uh like do 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 so do this do is do our <laughs> heartbeat yes so right here is the carotid artery and on our wrist is the radio artery cool. so those are really really um big um thick veins or arteries that allows us to kind of like feel the beat of our heart so it's working mm -hmm. yeah it's working. right yeah it exactly you know, I had a friend once tell me that uh, when when your heart rate is kind of up and when you're kind of energized and moving, that it's our sympathetic nervous system working. So what ha what is that, Kobe? Sympathetic nervous system? I don't know, Kavina. <laughs> so you have your sympathetic nervous system, and I think you have your parasympathetic Ooh. nervous system too. So there's two systems in your body, and when you're like exercising or you're stressed or you're trying to play a hockey game or something, your sympathetic nervous system system is working. So your heart's be beating really fast to help your muscles move so you can move faster. And then when you're like relaxed, maybe doing some yoga, your heart rate is lower, you're in the parasympathetic nervous system. Well, I, I wish that we could do some yoga because right now my sympathetic nervous system is just off the wall. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Kovi's Yoga Extravaganza. <sighs> Please sit in your crossed, oh. crisscross applesauce formation. Good thing I wore jean shorts. All <laughs> right, we're going to do a few exercises with yoga. So the first thing I want you to do is to breathe in and breathe out. And then breathe in. And then breathe out. <laughs> and then breathe in. <laughs> And let this all your scary. stress out. You know, oh, 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 oh. So what is happening here? <laughs> Parasympathetic nervous system. Kind of oh. sounds like paradise, right? You're when right. you're in paradise, right. you're like relaxed. And I bet if you feel your heart rate going down, it's beating yeah. less. It's beating less. Right? It is, yeah. Because you're not using your muscles as much, so they don't need as much oxygen. <gasps> Well, so are you saying like, you know, sometimes I get kind of like overwhelmed and stuff like whenever I'm kind of feeling a little more like stressed out, like if I just kind of take some like deep breaths and stuff that that mm. could kind of help with that. Yeah. Bring your body back to the parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah. So when you're stressed, take a breath. <laughs> All right. So perfect. Oh, Kobe. Uh, hello. Oh, oh, hey, Kobe. Oh, oh hi. How's it going? How are you guys? Did Good. you enjoy the yoga extravaganza from my twin? Um, <laughs> wow. Must be triplets because yeah. we <laughs> also had a boot, <laughs> boot camp. <laughs> All right. So now that our heart is like relaxing a little bit, I think it is time to do a really, really cool thing and recognize a female scientist. So we're going to do a really cool STEM spotlight. So, Katie, take it away. I am super excited to introduce our STEM spotlight for today. So I'm just going to grab her over here. So this Ooh. is Dr. Andrea Lavoie. 
And she works at a clinic here in Regina, the hospitals, and she works as a cardiologist. What does now, that mean? a cardiologist is a special kind of doctor that works specifically with the heart and our circulatory system. So for example, if somebody was uh, had a heart attack, then a cardiologist would go and kind of look at their heart and look at if everything is uh, working okay and if anything needs kind of repair. So cardiologists are a very vital healthcare uh, profession. And uh, Dr. Andrea Lavoie went to multiple schools across the country to become a cardiologist because working with our hearts is a super big, important job. And so she took many, many years to undergo that training so that she can help patients. At the same time, Dr. Lavoie also does research looking into uh, different techniques that we could use to look at the heart. So one of them is called intravascular ultrasound. Oh, big A word. What does that mean? And that's where we are actually able to explore the inside of the heart without necessarily doing surgery and cutting everything up and stuff. And so not only does she work with patients, but she's also researching new techniques and she is a fabulous scientist. So let's give uh, Dr. Lavoie a round of applause. Yeah, yeah Dr. Lavoie. Nicely done. So if you're interested in like bre and the respiratory system or the human body in general, become a doctor or a nurse or anything with the health medical field because yeah, it's really, really cool. And I think most, it's I think nice. Katie is going into one of those professions. What are you going to be, Katie? Yes, so I am going to be a physical therapist. And uh, these are special uh, people on the healthcare team. Physical therapists work with patients to treat movement disorders and help them to, you know, get moving. Maybe they've had a stroke or another condition that their movement is limited, or maybe, you know, they had like a shoulder injury or another injury all over their body. And so they're able to get patients up and moving again. So if you're interested in that, Text or tweet me in and I'll see if I can answer a question. All right, that's perfect time for our segment, Ask Our Scientists, oh where you yeah. send in uh, your questions and we try to answer them. All right, so first question comes from... Ooh. The suspense is killing <laughs> me. No. Who's going to be put on the hot seat? Ooh, are there animals that have different number of lungs? So are there any with like mm. one or maybe three? Can anyone think of any? To be honest, I don't, I, I don't think so. I don't know the answer to that question. I do know there are animals that don't have lungs. Hmm. And yeah. I and I know that some animals have like more than one heart. Ooh. Right? Throw. Which like one? horses. Horses. Have oh. five hearts. Yeah. That's crazy. Five hearts. Okay. But lungs, I'm, I'm not actually, I'm not actually too sure. No. You know what? If I was to take a guess, I would say that there probably is some sort of animal out there that has more than two lungs. Oh, That's a right. guess. Perfect. Thank you, Katie. All right, and another one. Oh, a comment from Luke the Donut. And Hi, doc Luke. Dr. Andrea Lavoie is is his friend's mom. <gasps> wow. That is wow, so what cool. a small world. Small world. Hey. That's cool. All right. Um, mm, ooh, Rex. Rex, what causes the bends in deep water divers? I've heard the of the bends, bends before, the bends. but I don't remember really what's about. Do one no. of you guys know? No, not quite. I'm not too sure. sure. I think we'll do some a little bit more research and yeah. maybe get back to you on Monday. Yeah, that's a really, really good question, Rex. And yeah, we'll look into that. Um, another question. Question is? Ooh, from Hayes Brothers. Hello. Hi, Hayes Brothers. Um, Congrats on the big win. Can our lungs pop like balloons in our body? <laughs> That is a great question, and I actually had that same fear, especially because <laughs> I'm uh, scared of balloons. But I can reassure you that our lungs will never pop in our bodies. I do mm. not think. Well, maybe. Well, if you think about it, uh, balloons are just one big cavity full of air, right? And our lungs have 300 million tiny balloons. Mm -hmm. So if one of those pop, I'm not, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have to be Ooh. very, very hard. Like, you don't have to worry about, like, exercising and then being like, oh, my gosh, my lung is going to pop. Don't worry yeah. about that. That's not going to happen. There yeah. is such thing as punctured lungs. There is. It is an injury that could happen, but 
Mm -hmm. I hope it doesn't happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. I think most likely not. Alveoli, um, they have like really, really strong muscles, and there's a kind of like a chemical or liquid chemical called like surfactant, right? So I think we talked about that before with Tom. Um, So that allows it to allows the alveoli to expand really, really large, so that like it doesn't pop or uh, it refrains um, the alveoli from popping. So we don't have to worry about it that much. Awesome. All right, um, remember to text in your questions. Um, another comment from Mini Fry. Hello, Mini Fry. Hi, Mini Fry. Um, cool name. Did you know yeah. that love actually has nothing to do with the heart? What? What? All right, then what does it have to deal with? Maybe your brain. Your brain has chemicals, right? Ooh, ooh, and, and then I know that. People? I know that like some animals have something called pheromones, so like yeah. kind of like like um, like a love smell. So if I whip out my pheromones maybe i'll attract <laughs> a mate <laughs> so you're <laughs> saying that you know all the love that i'm giving to you guys and getting from Feel the, the eyes family that's not actually from my heart i guess not but if you think about it like maybe you're trying to talk to your crush right and mm-hmm. you get nervous and your heart starts beating a lot that's so kind of has something to do with love that's more of like your sympathetic nervous system Ooh. Oh, maybe like you're super super nervous so the brain like sends chemicals and then <laughs> We're all like jazzed up, like, <laughs> <laughs> hello, <laughs> forget to speak. <laughs> 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 awesome. All right. Um, and I think that is it with our questions. So thank you so much for sending in your yeah, questions. Thank That's you. awesome. Um, so uh, unfortunately, this is the end of our um, episode. So remember that we are going to be live streaming um, from Monday to Friday in May. Yay! So I'm yeah. super, super excited with that. There's going to be more of our friends coming along and bringing in their experts, um, knowledge and all that. So that's really, really cool. Also, text and tweet in what kind of con- scientific concepts that we want you want you want us to talk about. So maybe yeah. you want to learn about the digestive system or the solar system dinosaurs. or something like that. Insects. Or dinosaurs, dinosaurs insects, music, bugs. I don't know. Anything. Text us, tweet us, because like we really want your input and we want to show and share um, our knowledge of science to you all. So it will be really really cool. So please text in and tweet us your um, suggestions, and then we'll make a cool lab manual for all of you. We could have a whole. Episode episode on slime if we wanted. Oh, that slime. Would be yes, mm-hmm. yes. We can like incorporate some physics in love, yeah. some math. I love math, right? I math love is math good. Too. Fractions. So good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. So Fractions. this has been the end. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we like to thank our supporters like Actual and the University of Regina. Thank you for supporting us and allowing us to um, work t- um, with Graffiti TV and delivering um, science content to all of you. So thank you so much. We are very appreciative of this opportunity and for all of you to be tuning in with us. So um, from all of us right here, See you guys. Thank you so much. Bye.